Hello, everyone. My name is Jennifer Hancock, and welcome to the International Humanistic Management Association's Lunch and Learn for the Humanistic Management Professionals. Um, my uh, I am the current president of the USA chapter, and I also have a company called Humanist Learning Systems, where I provide online um, continuing education uh, training. My co-host today is Elizabeth Castillo. Hi, Elizabeth. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm Elizabeth at Arizona State University, and I'm the secretary of the U.S. chapter of the Humanistic Management Association. Great. So today, our guest, um, and if you can mute yourself for right now as we get started, and then um, go from there. And then once we do the exercises, you can unmute yourself. Um, today's topic is improvisational organizing to humanize online and digital meetings. Our guest is Dr. Jyoti Bachani. She is one of the board members for the USA chapter and also on the international board for the International Humanistic Management Association. She is an associate professor of strategy and innovation at St. Mary's College of California. She's a former Fulbright senior research scholar with degrees from London Business School in the UK, Sanford USA and St. Stephen's College in India. She's co-founder of the US and Indian chapters of the International Humanistic Management Association. Her early career includes being a strategy consultant to Fortune 200 companies, working for Strategic Decisions Group, and managerial roles at Citibank and Tata Unisys. She is recognized globally as an expert on writing case studies and regularly leads professional development workshops, teaching other faculty at the prestigious Academy of Management Conference. She has served as a board member of the North American Case Research Association Editor-in-Chief of Emerald Emerging Markets Case Study Collection, which is the largest online collection of teaching cases for the emerging economies, and a guest editor for the special issue on poetry for organizing an organizational aesthetics journal. She currently serves as an editorial board member for the Journal of Management Inquiry, published by the Western Academy of Management, and is on the executive committees of WAM and AOM's interest group on management, spirituality, and religion, and I adore her. So welcome, Jody. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Welcome everybody, thank you for being here. I have a very short presentation more as a reminder to myself to not to forget to say a few important things before we get into the practice. I wanna share a little bit about how I got into this work before we get engaged with the work. So bear with me for just a second. That's the campus that I, I'm lucky to work at 17 miles east of San Francisco Bay Area. If you're ever in the area, come by, say hello. And um, thank you, Jennifer, and thank you, Elizabeth, for making this possible for all of us to spend this time together. I really appreciate the opportunity to play with all of you. I want to welcome everybody with a short poem. It's, it's this morning, springtime here in California. Wherever you are, you might be doing a million other things. So thank you for being here. This is a poem. For Originally in Hindi, I've translated into English for us, spring. When we met, no one said anything. You came, the brook bubbled, you smiled, the flowers bloomed. I silently experienced the spring within. So a few key things. Uh, Jennifer already introduced uh, the International Humanistic Management Association through which we are all connected. And um, their core agenda is to promote dignity and well-being. One of the things I do as um, part of the leadership there is to remind everybody that humans are not just resources for organizations, that organizing is an active verb so not necessarily always take it as the noun, but participate, engage. And that's where my work from improv is what I bring in. And to this morning, I request that now that you're here, if we can, for the next hour, engage with each other and try and organize our time together collectively using the rules from improv. Um, Improv basically is um, simple theater exercises. Um, 
so my intention is to spend most of our time in practicing it. Practice, practice, practice. Uh, I don't have answers. Some of you submitted some questions at the time of registration, but I'm willing to make sense of those questions together and see what answers we might come up with. I will share some of the answers that have worked for me, but I don't know most of you well enough to know whether they will work for you or not. So you really need to be actively engaged in that process. And I will learn from you as much from your experiences. So this will be mostly experiential and practical workshop. That's why the videos need to be on to be able to see each other and use our bodies and not just heads. Uh, and then we have saved some time for Q&A at the end. Um, along with the welcome, I, if it was in person, I would be offering you some tea. I got my cup with me. And if you need to have something to keep you comfortable near you, you can take 30 seconds while I'm presenting to go get your drink of choice. This also is a metaphor to say, in this gathering, I am not the one with the wisdom who's pouring tea into empty cups that you're bringing. You're bringing full, rich experience, knowledge, and we want to be tapping into that. And anytime I fail, hold me accountable to say that's not working and take care of yourself because I will lead you through some exercises, but if they're not comfortable for you, if they're not right for you, you have my permission up front to not follow the instructions to keep yourself safe and listen to what works for you. Having said that, some of the things will be unusual and difficult. You can surf the edge to find your level of discomfort because learning doesn't happen when we are in our comfortable space. We can get stuck in the rut if we always stay in the comfort zone. So find your edge, but don't fall off the edge. Uh, and that's pretty much, this is the original poem in Hindi. That's pretty much all the um, instructions I have before we get into the practice. If you have never heard of or seen improv, Here's some simple rules that improvisers use. Um, you've accomplished 90% of that by just showing up because showing up to participate is the most important thing. Um, already gave the warning about take care of yourself since we are not sharing physical space. I can't get the visible cues I might if I was doing it in my classroom or in another meeting. I will offer many different exercises and if it's uncomfortable for one, Two minutes, three minutes later, there will be another one. So you can like step out of some and then step back into others and keep track of which ones are uncomfortable because that's a lesson too about why you're not comfortable doing that and to reflect on it and to learn from that. And then which ones are really putting you in your groove? That's really good to know too. So it's about taking care of yourself at that level of engaging in the exercises practically, but also thinking about what that means. Improvisers have this yes and rule to say, agree with whatever is offered up because each one of us is offering our full cup of tea and whatever we are bringing. And if others can build on that and say, not just yes, but yes and, and add to that. So the assumptions behind that is we have each other's back. For this session, you are not in a, hostile conflict zone, which many of us inhabit in many other spaces, but because we've shared intention here, we will do that. And there are no mistakes in improv. Um, if I call out some instructions and in following those instructions, you either misheard or my instructions were not clear enough and somebody doesn't do it exactly as expected, we'll just laugh out loud and get another chance to try it. Um, because this is about practice, 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 trying, 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 many, many, many chances to do that. So with that, um, I'm going to stop sharing and get off my soapbox to welcome everybody. And um, since this is being recorded, um, if you want to change your name, you can go to the top right-hand corner and hover your mouse there. You'll see three little dots pop up and it'll give you the option in the menu to rename yourself. And if you want to um, 
not have your name that's showing up being used as we do the exercises. You can give yourself whatever name if you ever want it to be called the prince or um, her highness or <laughs> whatever your preferred name for the playtime is. Go ahead and do that at this time. And since this is about showing up fully, I'm gonna begin with a minute of silence. And in that silence, I want you to take your index finger and stick it under your nose and try to get as much information about your breath as you can. Find all the adjectives to describe the breath. Is it warm or cold? Is your breathing shallow or deep? Is it more active on one side or the other? Are the inhalations and exhalations about the same size or different? Let go of everything else that was happening before. You are here, you want to be fully present and be centered and be so comfortable in your center that even as we do the yes and and build on each other's energy, you stay centered in yours. With that centering, the next thing I want you to do is give your ears a nice massage with both your hands. Rub your ears, the bottom of the ears, the side, the top, behind the ears. If you want to stick your finger in the ear and rub it, however you want to pull it, twist it. Because you're going to be listening. Thank you already for listening so well. And improv works on building on each other's work. So listening is really, really important. So we want to thank our ears as we do that. And the other thing that rubbing your ears does, even if it is just for 30 seconds, is connects your right and left brain. And we have a dominant side. And if we want to learn new things, we want to activate the side that's less dominant and bring that into play as well to say we're going to use both sides of our brain in this active listening. And then the last thing I want to do in centering and being present is just rub your hands all over your body and just feel it. And wherever, if you're holding tension, put your hand there for just a few seconds longer and send your breath to that part of your body to say, let go of that stress. and acknowledge the stress, even if you're not ready to let go of it yet, but say it's there and I will take care of you. I will not do the exercises if that part is not ready to do the exercises that are asked. And just a quick reminder for those of you who are not yet on video, we would like to see your face and hear you now. Thank you for listening to me. I'm ready to listen as well. And the question that I want everybody to answer is how are you in this moment? And the way I want you to answer that is without using any words other than calling on the next person from whom we want to hear how they are. So before we do the exercise, I want you to go to the reaction button at the yeah. bottom on the menu and there is a raise hand function. So if you can all raise your hands, then we know that everybody's ready to participate and answer the question of how are you without using words, only using sounds or gestures. So for example, if it's really early in the morning and you're still waking up, you might say, mm -hmm. or if you're nervous like me doing a workshop, 
you're excited, yay, and you know what the gestures will be. So I'm gonna call on Jennifer and then I will lower my hand after I've called so we know who's already gone. Oh. Um. <laughs> Do I call the next person or? Yes, please. Oh, okay. Um, Elam Malik. David. I call David Green Bay. And you can lower your hand, Elham. Oh, yeah. Um, let me see. Stephanie, she really good. Good. Company. <laughs> uh, I call on Sue. I'll call on Ariane Sunny. Ah. I call on Edith. I call Jenny. Sorry, I forgot to call on someone. <laughs> Jenny. <laughs> oh. I call on Ken. I call on David. I call on Bill. Ah. I call on Ilana, Elena. I call on Ariana. I already went, but ah, oh. I call on Bill. <laughs> I call on Ravi. <laughs> I call on Rhonda Bollinger. I call on um, I don't see any other Dr. Lionel. I call on it look Elena. I thought I've already taken my turn. Oh, okay. Your hand was up. Let's see. See, Ida? Is that, am I saying it? Sanita? Okay. <laughs> I call on Elizabeth. And what is that everyone? That's everyone. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Very well done. Um, the next exercise is very similar to this. We will all raise our hands again so that we can keep track of who's already gone. And 
you will offer a gesture and call on a person and they will mirror your gesture as exactly as possible. And then after they've mirrored your gesture, they will offer a different gesture to the next person and the next person will mirror their gesture. There's mirroring theory of, you know, you feel connected to people who mirror your behavior. So I will uh, offer a gesture. I will ask Elizabeth to mirror my gesture. And then after Elizabeth has reflected back to me what I'm doing in the meeting, she gets to offer a gesture and that energy will be passed to whoever she calls and everybody gets a turn. Any questions about the instructions? I'm done mirroring. <laughs> oh yeah, I wasn't sure <laughs> what it was. Um, so now do I call on the next person and do yes, it? Yes. Uh, yeah. okay, and you so. offer your own gesture. Thank you for demonstrating. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jyoti. Um, I will call on Sunita. And my gesture is... I call on Peter. Stephanie. about Jenny. <laughs> Dr. Lionel Sweeney. Raviv. Oh, I need to call on somebody. Let's see. Shu Shu Chu Shu Chu. Um, I'll call on David. All right. Okay. Uh, and how about Edith? <laughs> I call on Bill Prince of Ali. I call on uh, Ken. Hmm. I call on. Hmm. 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 I hope you can do that. Um, 
just trying to see who is left. Uh, I call on um, uh, Jennifer Hancock. I call on Ella, I'm sorry. Could you repeat your gesture? I call upon Elena. She already went, but didn't lower her hand. So I'll just lower her hand. I think we have everybody. Thank you. Thank you. You're playing really well. I want to take a minute to hear and have us use words as we normally do and hear some reflections on how everybody's feeling, what is working, what's not, anything that's coming up for you. Um, I'll go. Um, it's fun and funny and like nervous, like my laughter is kind of nervous, right? It's fun, I'm enjoying the play, but it's also kind of nervous because you're thinking, okay, what is what am I gonna do? But you're also trying to be present for what everybody else is doing. And I kept, my picture on Zoom kept moving and then finding the person that, you know, because you don't when when you're not next, that kind of nervousness is like, oh, I got to pay attention. I love it. It's very happy. It feels very bonding, and I, I don't usually feel so connected to people on Zoom. It's a happy surprise. I wasn't expecting this. Most people don't expect that. I'm glad to hear that it was a happy surprise. Thank you. Sunita, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. So uh, it was fun, but at the same time, my mind was working, right? And I'm saying, oh my God, 30 minutes already gone. Where are we going? And I'm also thinking, okay, I have this organization design class and can I ask them to really do this? And will they really <laughs> listen to me and respond? You no, know, how could I use it in you know those kind of classes? You know, so these things were also going on as I was connecting with people here. So I was in two places. Thank you. We have time for one or two more. Uh, oh yes, uh, this is again from Japan. So I'm happy uh, to be with you because uh, uh, I can get. I can uh, jump in uh, different uh, places in the world right now. So I feel a uh, bonding and I feel uh, a night feeling. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Ken. I felt childlike, happiness, and alertness, uh, as we say. In the adults, it's often missing. So the childlike activities, uh, this helped me activate my mind. And also it was very relaxing. So thank you. Thank you, Alham. Last chance to speak or forever hold your quiet. <laughs> Well, thank you for those reflections. Uh, Elena's gesture of holding uh, hands up like that reminded me of something. If everybody can do this, intertwine your hands, fingers, and just take 10 seconds to notice how that feels. And then I'm going to ask you to untangle them, but engage by switching the way you fold your hands. 
not the way you had done it before, but switching it up from this to this. And notice how that feels. And tell me, tell us how that feels. It's very comforting, holding your own hand. Uh, we often don't, so it's very comforting. And then if you switch fingers to do it the other way? It's very playful, just playful energy. I was thinking I really noticed my Fingers. I mean, I noticed the difference between the two ways of holding the hands. Can you describe that difference? I'd have to agree with oh, uh, comforting and also being aware of what it felt like. Like when I first folded them, I'm just like, oh, my hands are sweaty. But then as I held it for a while, that comfort, and then just like I was aware of my hands. Okay. So for me, this the switching was, oh, that's wrong. <laughs> that's just wrong. That's just completely wrong. There's a reason I don't do it this way. <laughs> and I immediately want to go back to the way I do it, which, you know, this is just wrong. <laughs> I completely agree. I feel exactly the same way. I don't like the way it feels. It feels, feels like, oh, I have to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was my experience. And I was, you know, raise your hand if you felt uncomfortable one way and comfortable the other. Uh, not all of us are ambidextrous like Elham might be, but one, one way feels right and the other way feels so wrong that you have to fix it. And that's, I did this exercise because this is what we are doing. This is not how typical Zoom meetings go. You weren't expecting this. You were expecting a PowerPoint presentation and I didn't deliver on the PowerPoint presentation, but I see a few smiles around and your willingness to hold the discomfort and play with me. I'm so, so grateful that you were willing to go there. Um, I'm mindful of the time and want to have time to do the discussion at the end about how might you use it in the classroom or the Zoom or design, organizational design students doing this. But if with your permission, maybe one more exercise before we get into that discussion. Um, if this one will be a demonstration of power, and we will do the same thing that we did in terms of raising our hands, choosing a gesture, choosing a partner. And the only thing is instead of mirroring what the gesture is offered, you offer a response to that. So it's a call and response. So if I say to Jennifer and Jennifer responds with either, Jennifer, can you offer me a response to this, please? Okay. Um, and if Jennifer offers me a gesture, offer me a gesture, Jennifer. I can offer a response. And within with that call and response, uh, offering of a gesture and a response to that gesture, there's a complete scene there, just in two gestures. And the audience who are watching as the two people are playing, be mindful of if this was the non-verbal communication going on, do you notice a power difference? Do you know who has higher power and who has lower power? And through the demonstration of many different ways of slight power differentials without hurting anybody, uh, we will raise our awareness of how the non-verbal communication in many different spaces that we show up in happens around power. So you can show up in meetings with displaying your power in many different ways that we might demonstrate here. If that's okay, that will be the exercise and then we'll have a chance to talk again. And um, I've started most of these exercises. I'm happy for somebody else to take the lead if somebody else has a way of offering a gesture that, and yes, please 
raise all your hands so we know who's already gone. I'll call on Bill to lead us through this one. Bill, get us started. Do you want me to pick a person, uh, Yodi? Yes. Okay. yes, it's pair wise. Pick a person so they can focus on your gesture and offer a response to that gesture. Okay, I select Edith. Okay, so now I do a new gesture. Mm -hmm. to... Before you do a gesture. Oh, sorry. Pick somebody. Pick okay. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Um, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, pick a partner, please. Okay, uh, Stephanie. I, I'm i not mirroring what she's doing, right? I'm doing something, okay, sorry. Just to be sure. <laughs> You're responding okay. to her gesture. All right, just wanted to be sure. All right, Um, and Ken. Uh... <laughs> Thank you. Mm hmm. How come? Mm. Sue? Um, calling, um, Adam. I call Peter. Sunitha. Conjuity. Call on Ravi. Okay. Okay, I call on uh, Jennifer Hancock. <laughs> um, I call on Ariane. I call on Elena. I call on who's left? Let's see. Just come. Am I am I the last one? No, this line. Yes. So Lionel. <coughs> Excellent. 
And Dr. Sweeney, you can offer a gesture to Bill because he didn't get to have a partner. Oh, Bill did? Oh. And we have successfully wasted 42 minutes now. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer, over to you for doing your thing. Sure. I want to thank you for that. Um, you know, I think, as Jenny said earlier, the idea that you can be playing and having a good time in a Zoom meeting is a little bit bonkers. Right? <laughs> um, and I can see how, how this can be a really, these sorts of improvisational games can be a really good icebreaker um, and I don't really have any questions. I think Elizabeth, if we want to open it up to some of the questions that we got in advance, or if anybody has questions, they can put it in the chat and we can ask Jyoti um, about how to actually implement this in our real lives. <laughs> Not that this isn't real, but. Great. Um, so yeah, if you have questions, please put them in the chat and we'll go ahead and get started with some of the questions you submitted when you registered. Um, so one of the questions, Jyoti, is um, idea, ideas for doing this um, in the in the in a corporation in a workplace setting. Um, have you how would that be different in a classroom, and what tips might you have for that? Um, I've been doing this work for fifteen years, and I'm very comfortable. For me, this is the tip of the iceberg. I could keep you playing with me for another two hours. Literally. Um, so for each person, they have to decide what they're comfortable with doing. It might just be the icebreaker at the beginning, as Jennifer suggested, while people are coming into the Zoom room, check in with the how are you without words so that everybody gets equal time um, or one word. Uh, it could be a way to conclude the meeting with um, what's the one word you're leaving the meeting with. Um, or um, asking for commitments around that. I use it to break up the class of, you know, lecture gone too long, haven't heard from people. I want to hear, but I don't want long participation from everybody at some sessions. I just want a quick check-in and this going around the room, everybody to say, you know, one word about what you've learned or one sentence is a way to engage everybody. Uh, if you're not comfortable doing this work at all, I would suggest inviting somebody who's been doing this as a guest speaker and have them come into the meeting for a short five, 10 minute visit. And then if it doesn't work for your class or your corporate meeting, um, you don't personally have to be responsible for it. And if it works, you know that, yes, the students are up for it or this group is up for dealing something silly and then you can do it the next time around. But first time, if it bombs, it's a low risk strategy to say, oh, we're never inviting Dr. Bachani back to class again. She does like, what was she doing? <laughs> And, you know, that way you can get response. Sunita, for you, I was thinking of your class. You know, students might not mind a guest speaker coming in and doing something and leaving quickly and you knowing how they responded to it before you become vulnerable in front of them by doing something like that. That's one way to think about it. But yes, you have to assess the situation and the settings and you're the best people to decide what meeting to bring this to, how much of it and how to do it or not to do it. Can I ask a follow-up question on that? Because as you were talking, I was thinking about the practices we have at the IMA board meetings. And you know, a big part of our mission is dignity and well-being, but it's also bringing our full human selves to the meetings. And I do find that the way we open and that the exercises you put us through not only relax us and help us be fully human and present, um, but they help us bond, right, together and get to know people beyond the immediate work we're doing, right? So can you speak to that a little bit? Oh, thank you for that. When I've done it at conferences, I was forced to go online when COVID happened and I was scheduled to do this in person at the Academy of Management. I wasn't sure if it would work online at all. 
And some of the responses I got back were like, oh, thank you. Like you tapped into my imagination and I was missing not being able to go on a vacation, but this felt like a vacation because we, you know, we played games for a lot longer and we did like story play and other things. Um, and it worked. So that surprised me that it worked on Zoom. Um, but in terms of bringing our whole selves and humanity to it, uh, yes, uh, you know, let me put this caveat out there. For the rest of the day, take good care of yourself. This is more emotional work than you have done in many other days. And expressing emotion, which doesn't have a lot of space in professional life in particular, uh, you know, can release other things within us, in our bodies. We're used to treating our bodies as something to carry our brains around, at least in academia. That's what we do. We don't use our bodies much. And when we work with our bodies and gestures, it just opens up and releases other things. So take good care of yourself. It does bring all of our humanity to the game. And that's why I'm addicted to it, because I'm not too attached to the roles I play. I have been juggling multiple roles all my life and to be constantly torn between being a mom, being a professor, being a daughter, being a, it's like, just let me be human. I'm gonna claim my space. Uh, I, I just want to say uh, something which I wrote in the chat as well. Uh, I, I, I like this exercise uh, because at the end of the exercise, I realized it's all for fun. You know, it was very clear. I enjoyed it and so forth. Uh, but if the purpose has been stated at the very outset, uh, uh, the purpose was discovered through the process. It emerged uh, through the exercise. Uh, and the purpose was not stated at the very beginning. Uh, so my point here is, any action that requires resources to be implemented uh, have to be purposeful. Otherwise, you just uh, uh, spend those resources in an inefficient and in in ineffective way. So I think uh, we have to be very clear on at the very beginning, why are we doing this? It's all for fun. Then I think it would have even reduced the stress and anxiety and angst, uh, angst that some of the participants faced. Uh, if it is for fun, you can pretty much do anything that you want. Uh, so I think the purpose should be stated at the beginning rather than have uh, it emerge through the process. That's the, my only point. Thank you, Ravi. I, um, I'm a big believer that the obsession with efficiency has gone a little too far. We, at least in America and in my classroom, are living in a sleep deprived society and sleep is in it, <laughs> but it's necessary. So I'm okay with telling my students, sleep in if you need to, I give them permission that I would rather you go out, take a nap in the library or the car than be falling asleep in my lecture because then I feel like I'm being very boring if you were sleeping in my class. But the reality is they are sleep deprived and giving that permission liberates them. And occasionally people will take up on that and be honest about, you know, I really need to go take a nap now. Uh, so my two cents worth is it's good to have a purpose, but it's okay to not be always efficient because organizing is a verb and practice, 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 you know, doctors practice, musicians practice, uh, practice, uh, athletes practice before they show up. Uh, we Mistakes are allowed in that. Dr. Sweeney, did you have a question? Uh, yes. So uh, it, it's not a question. I really want to uh, piggyback on. It was an opportunity to do something different. And being unstructured in presentations now is not common. But I think that's the opportunity for people to be free and show more vision. And so that's what I walk away with. So not having the clear definition, but working through it without the slides, I think it gave us more of an opportunity to be creative. And I could feel that. Now, one thing that happened for me is the consistency of doing that. I had to look and listen to people and say names. 
And it made me think of most of the time I go to a presentation, I don't remember half the names, right? Even the presenter may be vacant in my mind. So I'm, I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much. <laughs> you made me giggle. <laughs> um, Bill. Yes, uh, I just wanted to uh, support Jody in this uh, and, and just confirm everything she's doing. I do a lot of improv work myself, and she and I have had many wonderful discussions about how important this is, not only in, uh, in, in, in the workplace, but in academia, et cetera. So I just want to totally support her. And uh, as a couple of examples, uh, I helped teach Dr. Farias is a, a, a dear friend of mine. We, we wrote a book together and uh, I teach his class every semester, the first couple of uh, sessions, because this is classes about uh, group exercises and group designs in the areas of sustainability. And, and after we do that, the, uh, the students are, are so much well, more well bonded. They communicate more, they're more relaxed. It opens up their creativity, their team building, et cetera. And, and their projects flow much better. The first time we did it, we did it at the end sort of as a bonus. But after that, the student says, no, 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 we have to do that at the beginning of the session. Uh, and I've also uh, uh, t teach his wife's class at the uh, BMCC in, in the city. Uh, so I just want to totally support uh, Jody with this work and, and just confirm to everyone here how important this is and how effective it is, not only in the uh, academia world, but in, in the business world. I do this for corporations as well. So many, many benefits to improvisation. Thank you Thanks so much. Will's in New York City, and if it's okay, maybe Bill can post his website link in the chat so sure. that anybody who invite wants to invite a improv leader, Bill's an uh, improv leader who's available. Thank, Thank you, Jody. You. Um, Edith? I just wanted to uh, make a comment about uh, uh, many of the... Um, playing was nonverbal and of the importance of nonverbal communication and how much you can get from that because I don't know any of you but I feel like I know you now right that I've learned something about you <laughs> so that's I'm just thinking or using it early on to kind of create those types of bonds, even if it's just a short, you know, short in nature. Thank you so much, Edith. I agree with you. It is a very connected. Um, I posted some resources that Jody had sent us um, beforehand about how you can continue to develop your skill set. Jody, do you want to say anything um, about the resources? I want to hear from Sunita first. Thank you. So uh, my question is, uh, so there are times when I faced, you know, when you ask people to do a gesture, there's a lot of inhibition. It's, it's also because of the culture that uh, I'm from where they're not used to it. So then uh, do you generally skip and say, okay, it's your choice and freedom or do you nudge or what do you do under such circumstances? I don't have the answers. <laughs> we make it up. <laughs> we just go with the flow and do the best we can. And if it fails, sometimes I end up with egg on my face. I wipe it clean and then go forward again when I feel courageous enough to. And it helps to have friends. So Jennifer and Elizabeth supported this work for this to happen. Uh, I ran into Bill in another Zoom room where we met and discovered our shared interests. And uh, through the Humanistic Association, Gerard is one of our board members for the US chapter. Um, so yes, we build confidence through assuming everybody has our back and then finding people who have our back and then growing that community. Okay, I, th I think you gave me an answer also. So maybe if I want to do it in a class, I'll call to students first to make them my allies. So that, that way, you know, and then they start and maybe it can. Yeah. Thank you. I have nothing to add to the resources uh, or say anything about it. Okay. 
Um, I will ask one question that came on my mind. Um, I teach online asynchronously, and I'm wondering, do you know any activities that can be done to connect people who really don't ever meet face-to-face? -face? Excellent question. Sounds like a question for the millennials. I have trouble connecting with my 25-year-old son because for him, <laughs> conversation is... Uh, what for me would be like doing a theater performance or something like it's really difficult. He would rather text. Okay. Uh, so well, I, 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 you know, as I'm thinking about this, because my son is on like discord all the time, I'm thinking that if you had a group chat, you could probably modify some of these things where, you know, you, you ask someone to name an animal like their favorite animal and then they call on the next person to name their animal and they call on the next person to name their animal or whatever the activity is you could chain it so that everybody sees everybody else's response i don't know if that would work i mean it'd be an experiment right hi elizabeth um, i've co-authored with um people i've not met through shared google docs so if there are the right prompts on the shared Google uh, Drive uh, with a shared, I don't know. Peter uh, and Sue. <laughs> Elizabeth, um, I think it depends on what you want to achieve. Is it just ice breaking? I'm sure you have many ideas, but if you want um, people who never meet physically to get connected, um, one way is to get them to create something um, collaboratively so they make a story together whether you want them to do um, it um, like what um, Jyoti has taught us use body language or um, just give them a theme and then maybe in 10 minutes then everybody can create a new story and then um, give them a st ending whatever so they feel very satisfying when they could create something together so I just want to jump in here. We've been on for an hour. Um, let's take one more question and then ask Jyoti to give us some final thoughts. I'll stop the recording and then we can continue discussing. Does that sound good? Okay. Bill? Uh, Peter, excuse me. So, uh, I was uh, thinking that I sometimes teach design thinking and innovation. And I, I was, this for me speaks to things like empathy, uh, trust building, uh, psychological safety. I'm, I'm thinking this could be illustrative and and opening up um, quite a lot of interesting spaces when you're trying to deal, you know, trying to, you know, exercise and teach those sorts of things. So uh, that's just an observation. Right. Jody, do you want to leave us with any closing thoughts? Um. Thank you for playing with me. Really, really grateful. Uh, this doesn't work if people don't play together. So I really appreciate your presence and your active participation. Um, diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging is the buzzword everywhere these days. And my closing sentence to take away is laughter has no accent. So thank you for the laughs this morning. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed um, these exercises. And I want to thank everybody who joined us today and actively participated with the session. We hope you enjoyed it. I know it wasn't our normal lunch and learn, but I think we all learned a lot. And, and certainly, you know, every time I have a conversation with Jody, I learn a lot. So <laughs> there's that. But uh, we do hope you'll think about joining the association. Um, you know, we function because we have members, right? And we have expenses. And so your membership helps pay for these things. Um, and then if you join, you also get some benefits. You get to meet like-minded people. We have a membership site and you can, if you're looking for someone with a specific background, you can search the members and reach out to them. So I just want to thank you for joining and um, you know, please join the International Humanistic Management Association.